The Process of Reading Nonfiction. As readers of nonfiction, we approach a text like we would a puzzle. Reading nonfiction is a step-by-step process, which each piece revealing more of the final product. First, we lay out everything we know. Next, we ask ourselves questions. Search for answers and ask new questions that we might have developed along the way. And finally, we reflect on what we've learned. Considering new facts and details. Today, you will need this organizer, a reader's puzzle, from your school-wide notebook. We've already filled one of these out previously in the unit. Now we're going to fill out another one today. Today, we're going to piece together old and new information about a really cool animal. Penguins. As readers of nonfiction, it is really important that we understand the first thing we must do before we read any text is ask ourselves what we already know about the subject. Let's preview the article, Penguins on Parade by Tamar L. This is a two-page article, so be sure to check the opposite side to make sure that you see the whole article and all of its features. Before we start asking questions, let's take a look at some of these text features. We have our title, some subheadings that tell us about the sections of this article, and then photos with captions. These are going to be really helpful resources for us as we develop some of our questions before, during, and possibly even after. Let's get started with asking some questions. Something that I know about penguins is that most of them are black and white, but I don't know why. Maybe that could be a part of one of my questions. Let's jot this fact down together. Most penguins are black and white. Now the question I have that goes with the fact that I know is I wonder why they're black and white. Hmm, that's something I hope to find out in my reading. Not all of my questions will be answered in my reading, though. Sometimes I have to further investigate elsewhere. I will pause here. Now it's your turn to write down facts that you already know about penguins and questions that you have. We'll discuss, and then I'll continue. Thanks for sharing great information and questions. Here's some more facts and questions that I have based on the information I already knew. I know that penguins, or most penguins that I know of, can't fly. I don't know of any that can. And I wonder why penguins can't fly. The other thing that I know is that not all penguins live in the Arctic. And I personally would like to know, how are these penguins different from one another? Not knowing the answers to these questions makes me very eager and curious to find out. Now let's read together to find out if we can answer any of these questions and what else we can learn. Follow along as I read the first column of this article. Behold the humble penguin. These flightless black and white birds aren't much to look at, really. Short and squatty with wings like flippers, they waddle around awkwardly on land and certainly can't soar like eagles. But there's more to the penguin than meets the eye. Ooh, a subheading. They come in all sizes. Think penguins all look the same? Think again. There are more than a dozen different kinds of penguins, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Well, all sizes, anyway. The largest is the emperor penguin, which stands about three and a half feet tall and tips the scale at 90 pounds. The smallest is the fairy penguin, which averages about 16 inches tall and a mere two pounds. Wow, a fairy penguin? I've never heard of that type of penguin. And that's a big difference between a three and a half feet tall, 90 pound emperor penguin versus a 16 inch tall and two pound fairy penguin. I'm going to jot that down that I've learned that. Because I also want to know now if these penguins live in the same areas. 
I went ahead and jotted this question down here because it's going to help me keep track of what I've learned and make me eager to learn more because I want to know if this question will get answered. Now, do you have any questions based on anything that you've learned in this first section? This would be a great time to write them down. Now let's continue reading. I'm going to read the rest of this first column. Make sure you stop and jot down any questions that you have along the way. You also have a copy of this text, so feel free to mark up the text in any way you see fit. This section is called, They are Black and White for a Reason. The penguins' white bellies and black backs serve as camouflage, which makes it harder for other animals to see them. Underwater predators, such as the sea lion, have trouble seeing the penguin's white belly against the sunlit sky. Airborne predators, like the Australian sea eagle, have a hard time making out the penguin's black back against the dark ocean water. As a result, their coloring is like protective armor. Hey, this section answered my question. Do you have any new questions based on what you've learned? This section is called, They're Not Just Black and White. True penguins are mostly black and white, but some have brilliant plumes of feathers that look like fancy hats. Others have bright patches of color around their cheeks and ears that make it seem as if they had their faces painted at the county fair. For example, rockhopper penguins and macaroni penguins have golden crests on their heads. King penguins and emperor penguins have bright orange patches around their ears. Here are some photos of penguins. It says here in the caption, the light-colored shapes on the sides of these king penguins' heads are bright orange, just like those on the emperor penguin. I wish we could see a picture. This is going to prompt me to look for some pictures of these types of penguins so I can see what they look like. I definitely have some questions about the penguins not just being black and white. I'm going to jot those down on my sheet. I'm going to take a moment to make sure I add the responses to some of the questions that I asked on my graphic organizer, just to keep track of facts. I went ahead and added the response to why the penguins are black and white. I don't have the answer to any of these other questions, but if you found answers to some of your questions, go ahead and jot those in now. We can pause here. Let's take a moment to discuss our findings and also share some questions that we've developed based on things that we've been learning about penguins. Pause here until you're ready. Okay, let's continue reading. We're gonna continue to use our critical thinking while we read or listen to reading. Here we go. They are world-class swimmers. Penguins can't fly in the air, but they sure can fly in the water. Their flipper-like wings and torpedo-shaped bodies are perfect for swimming. With speeds up to 20 miles per hour, penguins can swim faster and dive deeper than any other bird. In fact, they are so comfortable in the water that they spend as much as 75% of their time swimming, diving, and floating. They can even take naps floating on the ocean surface. Wow, these are awesome facts. They like company. When penguins aren't swimming around in the ocean, they live in giant penguin cities called colonies with thousands or even millions of other penguins. Like us, penguins are warm-blooded and must take measures to stay warm in cold climates. Their layers of blubber and fluffy feathers help, but their huge colonies allow them to huddle together for warmth. So being together is quite useful. Penguins are also very fair. They rotate from the inner part of the huddle to the outer part, so all of the penguins get some time in the warm center. Their fairness would make them a great addition on the playground during recess. Here's a picture with a caption next to it. I see penguins. It looks like they're hopping off of a rock. It says these rockhopper penguins patiently wait their turn for a dive into the chilly water, their version of Disneyland. I have a pretty good idea here why the title of this text is Penguins on Parade. I'm going to keep reading, but if you have any questions, please make sure you're jotting them down. They know how to have fun. Penguins like to have fun as much as we do. They slide around the ice on their bellies. They go fish surfing through the ocean waves. They dive off of cliffs into the water. 
In fact, they might like having fun too much. Sometimes you will see long lines of penguins patiently waiting for their turn to jump off of a certain cliff. They dive into the water, jump back onto the land, and get back in the line again. It's almost like they have their own Disneyland. The back page of this article has a map. And there is some information that just kind of explains what you're looking at. So at the top of the page here, it says, as you can see, penguins have a lot going for them. Aside from their camouflage coloring, they are diverse, resourceful, and playful. That's why, despite their rather dowdy appearance, penguins are among the most popular and beloved creatures in the animal kingdom. So here's a picture. You can see Antarctica, South America, Africa, Australia on this map. And it's showing you geographical distribution of each types of these penguins, which is really cool because it shows you in all the different areas that penguins can live. On the very bottom of this page, it also says there are 17 species of penguins worldwide. The dark gray areas indicate where the various species live. Antarctica, the surrounding islands, New Zealand, Australia, South America, and Africa. I'm very interested to research all these penguins. Great work. Make sure you write down any new questions that you might have related to what you've just learned about penguins. And don't forget to respond to any of those questions that you've had answered with the reading. Today we practice the process of reading nonfiction, which is really different than how we read fiction. Today we use our critical thinking skills to put together all the information in a nonfiction text, much like we would a puzzle. We began by activating our schema or our background knowledge on the topic or subject that we'll be reading about. We then developed questions based on the knowledge we already had about the topic. And finally, we read very carefully, looking for answers to our questions and to accumulate new knowledge about the topic. This is such an important process for nonfiction readers because it helps us connect what we already know about a topic to new knowledge, and it helps us to really focus on our reading. Great job today, boys and girls.